God has a work for this church to do. God has something for every single one of you to change the world. And that is by telling the world about Jesus Christ, by avoiding, he says, your garment has been trusted to you. Avoid worldly and empty chatter and opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge. This world wants us to believe that truth is relative, that what you believe and what I believe, though they may be opposing and different, they're both true. I'm sorry. That's moronic. It's idiotic. And it's just plain stupid. Two opposing truths cannot be true. There is only one truth. There is only one truth, and that is Jesus Christ. That is the Word of God. But avoid. Do not bring the world into your church. Do not bring the worldly philosophies into this church. Oppose them. Avoid them. Keep them out. Because there is only one truth. And I'm going to tell you this. Because you are a young church. And I've been a pastor for 17 years. And I've always worked in existing churches. And here's the one problem with most existing churches. Their, their foundation is on tradition. And all tradition is, is man-made beliefs. As you grow as a church, I charge you and encourage you to discard tradition and make sure that you stay true to the Word of God. It's probably why most of you are here in this church. Either you're a new believer and you, you've come in the world and you've seen churches out there. You see them with the light. And I hate to say it, most churches are not. They're not doing their job. All they're doing is hurting people because you have to become like them. Rather than every person that joins the church changes the church. When you come together to, to worship God. Don't lose this. Reject, avoid what is called worldly knowledge. Because which some have professed and thus come astray from the faith. When we bring the world into church, when we bring the philosophy of the world into our communion with God, we will go astray. God is not asking you for religion. He's asking you for relationship. Amen. Thomas Jefferson, the, the, the writer of, our, of America's Constitution, decided one day that he was going to rewrite the Bible because Thomas Jefferson did not believe in miracles. So he rewrote the Bible. It was a very thin book because this Bible was full of miracles. You can't rewrite it, folks. It's his attempt to bring his philosophy and his way into it. And what happens is we go astray. The very moment that we get off our eyes off of Jesus Christ, we go astray. The very moment we stop reading this and we start reading Plato, Confucius, or any of these other philosophers of the world, and we start believing in science, and we start believing in all these things, we go astray and we lose the faith. If you go astray, you will never find your way back. So stay focused. Stay focused. The great theologian, Mr. Miyagi, said this. Stay focused, Stay focused. And Paul has done this. May grace be with you. And my prayer for you is this, that grace may be with you. And that you will know that God is the God of life. He is the God of good, of, of a, a good, truthful word. That He is sovereign. That He is in control. He is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And all that we have is what He has blessed us with. So may we use it for blessing. Thank you, Pastor Matt, for a very powerful word. And I hope, and I did this from prayer, and I hope that, you know, whatever we heard from God today, He will 
bear fruit. You know, that people will see, you know, the light. We are the salt and the light of the earth. That's what God has charged us to do. To show people the hope that the world they can, they can even find, you know. It's only in Jesus that they can find peace, love, and joy. And the eternal life that, you know, more than this world cannot give, you know, it's only we can only find it in Jesus. Let us stand. As I close in prayer. To your most gracious and heavenly Father, it is my prayer, O oh God, that you would continue, Lord, to minister into the hearts of your people. That you would give us an open mind and an open ear, O oh God, that whatever we heard from this place, O oh God, through your servant, O oh God, that it will, re re it, it will reflect our, in our lives, O oh God, that people will see the light, O oh God, through our lives, O oh God, that as we go out to the world, O oh God, in the, in the world that is full of darkness, O oh God, that your light will shine through us, O oh God. Use us, O oh God, to be an instrument of your love. Use us, Lord God, to be an instrument of your grace, O oh God, that when people see us, Lord God, they will know, Lord God, that you are with us, O oh God. And thank you, Lord, for this day, O oh God, that you will give us your word, O oh God. It is my prayer, God, that you would bless your people, O oh God, that we may continue to experience, Lord God, the abundance of your grace and the abundance of your love, O oh God. Bless your people, O oh God, as we depart from this place, Lord God. We thank you for your servant, Lord God, and we pray. preach your word, O oh God. It is my prayer, O oh God, that you will continue to bless him, Lord God, and give him the double portion of your amazing. Lord, we, we surrender everything to you, O oh God, and we recognize, Lord, that apart from you, Lord God, we can do nothing. Lord, help us, Lord oh God. We are not perfect, Lord oh God, but Help us, Lord God, to imitate you, Lord God, that we may become like you, Lord God, more and more and more. To him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you before his glorious presence with a full and with great joy. To the only God our Savior, be the glory, majesty, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. And the church will say, Amen. Amen. Amen.